everyone. I'm Lana Zak. We're breaking in to take you to Wilmington, Delaware, where Joe Biden is discussing the nomination of Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court. Let's listen. Uh, of our nation to lie in state in the U.S. Capitol. And though uh, it should not have taken nearly this long to bestow that honor on a woman, it nevertheless speaks to the unique and powerful impact Justice Ginsburg has made on our society and her, en her enduring legacy of equal rights and equal justice under the law. Shortly before Justice Ginsburg's passed, she, uh, she told her granddaughter, and I quote, my most fervent wish is that I will not be replaced until a new president is installed, end of quote. It wasn't a personal request. It wasn't a favor being asked for. It was the last act of a long, unflinching career of standing up for American democracy. Never before in our nation's history has the Supreme Court justice been nominated and installed while a presidential election is already underway. It defies every precedent, every expectation of a nation where the people, the people are sovereign and the rule of law reigns. But yesterday, before Justice Ginsburg could be laid to rest, and after 100,000s of Americans had already cast their ballots, the President nominated a successor to her seat. It's no mystery about what's happening here. President Trump is trying to throw out the Affordable Care Act, and he's been trying to do it for the last four years. The Republican Party has been trying to eliminate it for a decade. Twice already, the Supreme, the Supreme Court has upheld that law, the Affordable Care Act. And the Congress, expressing the popular will of the American people, has rejected President Trump's efforts as well. Now, all of a sudden, this administration believes they found a loophole in the tragedy of Justice Ginsburg's death. It doesn't matter to them. The Republicans set the precedent just four years ago when they denied even the courtesy of a hearing to President Obama's nominee after Justice Scalia passed, after he had only passed away nine months prior to Election Day. It didn't matter to them that millions of Americans already voting on a new president and a new Congress had begun all that does matter is that they see an opportunity to overturn the Affordable Care Act on their way out the door. And as I speak, we are still in the midst of the worst global health crisis in a century, a crisis that has already taken over 200,000 lives, between 750 and 1,000 lives a day and counting. And yet, the Trump administration is asking the Supreme Court right now, as I speak, to eliminate the entire Affordable Care Act. The administration filed a brief in the Supreme Court that concludes, and I quote, the entire ACA thus must fall. The entire ACA thus must fall. President Trump can claim all he wants He's going to protect people with pre-existing conditions. But the fact is, he's already fighting to take those protections away as we speak. If he has his way, more than 100 million people with pre-existing conditions like asthma, diabetes, and cancer could once again be denied coverage. Complications from COVID-19, like lung scarring and heart damage, could become the next flood of pre-existing conditions used as an excuse to deny coverage to millions of people. Women could once again be charged higher premiums just because they are women. Pregnancy becoming a pre-existing condition again. Seniors would see their prescription drug prices go up and the funding for Medicare go down. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the American people want. President Trump sees a chance to fulfill his explicit mission 
steal away the vital protections of the ACA from countless families who have come to rely on them for their health, their financial security, and the lives of those they love. President Trump just tweeted an hour ago on my way here, and I quote, Obamacare will be replaced with a much better and far cheaper alternative. If it is terminated in the Supreme Court, it would be a big win for the USA. It should come as no surprise that on Saturday, President Trump would nominate Judge Amy Coney Barrett and on Sunday lay out clearly what his objective is to terminate Obamacare. The judge has written has a written track record, written track record of, of disagreeing adamantly with the Supreme Court's decisions on two occasions upholding the ACA. In fact, not as a judge, but prior to going on the bench, she publicly criticized Chief Justice Roberts' opinion upholding the law eight years ago. The American people understand the urgency of this moment. They're already voting in droves because they know their health care hangs in the balance. They understand that if Donald Trump gets his way, they could lose their right to vote, their right to clean air and water, their right to equal pay for equal work. Workers could lose their collective bargaining rights. Dreamers could be thrown out of the only country they've ever known. And women could lose the bedrock rights enshrined in Roe v. Wade for 50 years. People are voting right now because they know the very soul of this country is at stake and because they know that the decisions of the Supreme Court affect their everyday lives. Their voices may not matter to Donald Trump. They may not matter to Mitch McConnell. But there are Senate Republicans out there who know in their hearts they should. But if they shut out the voices of those during a voting period, during an election, and closing the door on American democracy thereafter. This is where the power of the nation resides, in the people, in the rule of law, in precedents we abide by. To subvert both openly and needlessly, even as Americans cast their vote, would be an irreversible step toward the brink and a betrayal of a single quality that America has born and built on. The people decide. The Senate has to stand strong for our democracy. They must not act on this nomination until the American people finish the process they're already begun of selecting their president and their Congress. As I've said before, if the people choose Donald Trump, then the Senate should give his nominee a hearing and a vote. If the people do not choose Trump and choose me, President Trump's nomination should be withdrawn. I should nominate, chosen by a president who's just been elected and by the people, to get a fair hearing, which would not even occur until early February, a confirmation vote. The U.S. Constitution provides one chance, one, for the Americans to have their voices heard on who serves a lifetime appointment on the Supreme Court, who makes those big decisions about their health care, their civil rights, and much else. That chance is now. That moment is now. And the voters, in my view, are not going to stand for this abuse of power. And if we are to call ourselves a democracy, their voices must be heard. I urge the American people to keep voting and to let your current senators know that you want to be heard before a vote on confirmation of a new justice. And I urge every senator to take a step back from the brink, take off the blinders of politics for just one critical moment, and stand up for the Constitution you swore to uphold. This is a time to de-escalate, to put an end to the shattering of precedents that has thrown our nation into chaos under this president. Just because you have the power to do something 
doesn't absolve you of your responsibility to do right by the American people. Uphold your constitutional duty. Summon your conscience. Stand up for the people. Stand up for our cherry system of checks and balances. Americans are watching. Americans are voting. And we must listen to them now. We must, we must allow them to exercise this sacred power. So please, listen. Thank you. May God bless America. And may God protect our troops. And I'll take a few questions. Yes, sir. They should see to it that the American public will vote on the Senate races in this election, and they'll vote Republicans out of office. That's the consequence. That's the focus. That's why I want to make it clear and stay on message here. The clear focus is, this is about your health care. This is about whether or not the ACA will exist. This is about whether or not pre-existing conditions will be continued to be covered. This is about whether or not a woman can be charged more for the same procedure as a man. This is about people's health care in the middle of a pandemic. Yes. You asked me one question. Fire away. No, I have not. I, I, I concluded that that would put them in a position, if they were to vote the right way, that they'd be compromised because I called them. And so, but I know, and I have great respect for a number of my Republican colleagues, my former Republican colleagues, and uh, I'm hoping they will do the right thing. <laughs> He's almost — no, I have no comment. Yes. I am not — and I, I, I know you're going to be upset with my answer. But what I'm not going to do is play the Trump game, which is a good game he plays. Take your eye off the issue before us. If I were to say yes or no to that, that becomes a big issue. That's the headline here. I am focused on one thing right now, and I really mean it. I'm focused on making sure the American people understand that they're being cut out of this process they're entitled to be part of. And the cutout is designed in order to take away the ACA and your health care in the midst of a pandemic. That's the focus. That's what it's on. And that's the deal. Thank you all so very, very much. Thank you.